What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Eric and in today's video I'm going to show you guys how to install this awesome Planum Spacer on your 350Z or Infinity G35. A platinum spacer is a great way to increase some horsepower on these vehicles without breaking the bank. So let's go ahead and remove some of these parts out of the way so that we can install this Z1 Motorsports platinum spacer. A key point about this platinum spacer is that it's angled so it goes from 7 16 all the way to 3 8 um, which is a little bit different from your standard one size platinum spacers. Um, I haven't really found a legitimate answer to the question if uh, angled plenum spacer is going to give you better performance over a traditional one size plenum spacer. Now personally why I believe you guys should go with an angled plenum spacer is because if you look at the stock plenum design you guys can see that the front cylinders are not getting as much air as the back. So with this plenum spacer it's going to uh, give you more air to those front cylinders that actually really need it. So this plenum spacer should give you the best of both worlds. It's going to allow the front cylinders to get more air into them and it's just going to give you an overall better performance because of that fact alone. So we're going to go ahead and get this installed. So the first thing that you want to do is disconnect your battery so that you don't mess anything up when you're disconnecting all the electrical connections. First thing we're going to do is remove the air intake out of the way. There is a clamp over there and then there's a connection here for the mass airflow sensor that you need to remove. Don't forget to disconnect the hose in the back. Once you do that, the air intake should be free. So now that we got the intake out of the way, we're going to go ahead and remove several fasteners that hold the intake plenum to the lower plenum. Um, once we do that, we should be able to break it free. So there is about 18 10 millimeter fasteners that you need to remove. I'm also going to remove this hose so that we can take it completely uh, off with the plenum. So now that all the top fasteners are pretty much loose, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect two lines uh, that are remaining. There's one over here and one on the bottom that goes to the throttle body. Uh, go ahead and remove those lines and then after that you should be able to lift up the plenum. I'm going to leave the fasteners on the top so that I can take everything off together as one piece. This line that goes to the throttle body is a coolant line so go ahead and get like a spark plug or something to plug it up so it doesn't spill all over your engine bay. So with everything removed, you should be able to remove the upper plenum together with all the fasteners. So 
So now that we have the upper manifold off, we're going to go ahead and install our Z1 plenum spacer. I did go ahead and uh, already replace my gasket um, that goes on the bottom just to be on the safe side. So taking a look at the instructions, um, it says that you're going to have to reuse some of the fasteners, but some of the other ones uh, you're going to have to use the supplied fasteners that they give you. So we're going to go ahead and orientate the plenum to the correct way. And we're going to go ahead and install it. Then go ahead and use the supplied gasket. So now that everything is pretty much ready to go, we're going to go ahead and install the upper plenum back onto the vehicle. So to make this pretty simple, you're basically going to be using the longer fasteners that they provide with the washer that has the seal on it for the back three ones. And then the ones that are, were originally in this hole are you going to go ahead and move forward, but you're also going to add a washer with the rubber seal on it. You're going to go ahead and repeat these, uh, these steps to each one. So as you guys can see, I did go ahead and finish installing the Z1 Motorsport Spacer. I'm pretty happy with the fitment of everything. Um, the instructions are pretty clear and it was pretty easy to get this done. So now what I'm going to do is put everything back together and then we're going to go ahead and see how the vehicle runs. It's not a game. It's a red So right now what I'm doing is letting the car idle for a little bit. Um, there is no hissing or any noises that I'm hearing from the intake plenum, which I'm pretty happy about that. So I've been driving the G35 around for a few days now with the Z1 plenum spacer and I can't really tell too much of a difference. I recently did the spark plugs on this vehicle so it could have been that I needed to get those spark plugs changed. Uh, but like I said I can't really uh, feel too much of a difference uh, with the butt dyno but I'm pretty sure if you guys get your vehicles tuned you guys will notice a significant increase in power. Now I'm not saying that this is not going to benefit your vehicle because like I said those front cylinders do need to get more air in them and with this angled plenum spacer um, that allows for those cylinders to get more air uh, which I'm sure it will benefit the vehicle a lot but for my personal just daily driving I'm not able to tell much of a difference the next thing that this vehicle needs is to get the plastic dip removed so go ahead and stay tuned for the next video uh, where I'm gonna show you guys how to remove plastic dip from your vehicle if it's been sitting for a long time and the paint is hard to remove um, once I do that, I'm going to try to hopefully paint this vehicle so that I can get it looking nicer. Um, and then after that, I'm going to focus on some performance parts like some headers installs and a better exhaust. 
If you guys did like this one, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Eric's DIY Garage. And I'll catch you guys all in the next video. Peace out.